Welcome to Smart Living. I'm Daphne Monroe. Sitting next to me is a dear friend of mine, Vickery Randall. And believe it or not, we're recording this from Porto, Portugal, because that's where I'm at, and this is where Vickery lives. So welcome to the show, Smart Living. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a <laughs> treat to have you in my home. I know. Well, we're actually on vacation, and Vickery is from Arizona, and you will absolutely enjoy hearing her journey, and that's one of the reasons why I'm thrilled to have her on the show, but she was so kind enough to invite us while we're vacationing uh, to come and stay with her. And so I actually have friends now in Portugal, so I think that's cool. But just to give you some background why Vickery's a guest on Smart Living is because she's one smart woman. So basically she lived in Arizona, had an amazing job at Honeywell, you were a senior director, um, and basically had enough of that lifestyle. You and your husband decided to move to Portugal and you've been living here full time for two years now. Yes, just and, over two years. And even bought a house. Yes. Okay. The other thing I want to point out is this beautiful art sitting next to us because now Vickery <laughs> is semi-retired. She doesn't have that powerhouse career anymore because she chose a more simpler life. And part of that is one of her hobbies, I guess, turned into actually a talent because she's now a painter and people actually buy paintings from her. So anyway, enough of that. So Vickery, so... People, if, so tell people a little bit about your career, how you live in Arizona, and what made you decide to move to Portugal? I mean, that really is like, we're just sitting there. Okay. So first of all, thank you again. Yeah. It's so great to have you here. It's always um, so fun to reconnect with friends from Phoenix. Yes. Lived in Phoenix for 25 years, uh -huh. and 25 felt like the right amount of summers. <laughs> <laughs> And so we had always, my husband Paul and I had always had the dream of retiring in Europe. And the reason we chose Portugal is because uh, along with Greece and Malta, Portugal has the shortest path to EU citizenship. It's five years. So the fact that we've already been here two, and then they start from the day of your visa appointment, we're already about halfway through that five years. And at the end of the five years, we'll have our Portuguese passport, which means that we can live anywhere in the EU. Exactly, because that's what the EU has. So that basically allows you to travel throughout yes. Europe. You can be live in any country within Europe once you have a passport that is part of the EU. And yes. of course. So, so it's the fastest way to earn your citizenship. And of course, you'll have dual citizenship. Yes. So you'll still be a citizen of the United States. Yes. So that was a smart move. In addition to that, being that I am the smart shopper, I also want to mention the fact that Portugal is incredibly incredibly affordable. Yes. Like, um, you went out to dinner, we got a beautiful meal with sea bass, wine, dessert, everything. I think the meal maybe came to like 100 euros, and that was for four of us. That's a really good deal. Yeah. So, so that's one of the reasons why you chose. But why did you decide to leave Phoenix? I mean, Phoenix is such a beautiful place to live. Phoenix is an absolutely beautiful place to live, and we had a wonderful life there, and so many amazing friends because we were there for so long. We had a wonderful support network through my work, through our friendship circles, through the Phoenix Fire Department, through people that we did different activities with. So we weren't, we weren't running from anything other than the way for me to retire and not do the Fortune 100 corporate America grind anymore was to live in a place that's less expensive. Okay, and that's Portugal. And that's Portugal. Okay, and well, that is fantastic. So you guys just recently purchased a home. Yes. Out of, I, that always makes me nervous, because you know, I like real estate, but I'm like, it's gotta be within the United States. Uh -huh. so, so it's actually, it's actually not that scary to buy a home in Portugal. The, the thing that's interesting here is in America, when you see a house on the internet, on the MLS, you immediately know exactly where the house is located. It'll give you the address, and you can drive by, you can walk by, mm -hmm. you can see if you like the neighborhood. The way that the Portuguese real estate websites work, which is the same in Spain, they use the same network, which is called Idealista. Okay. It never, there's privacy in Europe, so it never reveals the exact location of the home. Okay. And so you can get an idea of the area from a dot on the map. Maybe if you're really good at Google Maps and they showed a picture of the outside of the house, you can right. figure out which really? one. Really? But until you work with a licensed realtor, you can you find out the actual, you know. Do they address. have for sale signs outside? On yes, they sale? do. Okay, so yeah. they do at least do that to mm -hmm. And it's really interesting. Yeah. And by the way, on a side note, one of the things I've noticed in Europe, because I want to Throw in a little bit of education uh, for people who may not have traveled outside of Europe or outside of the U.S. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the things in every website that I go to, mm -hmm. I have to always do the cookies things where it's allow or accept every single website. Yes, it's not like that in the U.S. 
It can be frustrating here because until you're fluent in Portuguese, not only are you accepting cookies, but you're also not understanding desperately <laughs> trying to change it to English. That's right. And then if you're trying to use a search engine, so when we left Phoenix, we sold literally almost everything. Right. And so now we come here and we need to shop online for, I'm just going to make up an example, a trash can. Okay. And so even though I've changed it to English, now I'm typing in the words trash can and the search engine is still programmed in Portuguese. So, and so yeah. what the results you get may or may not resemble a trash can. I, I'm sure there are many challenges mm -hmm. to moving into a country where, you know, I mean, a lot of people speak English. Mm -hmm. um, so it is easy. Um, but the main language here is Portuguese. Yes, and it's European Portuguese, which is different than, than Brazilian, Brazilian Portuguese. Portuguese. But you have a lot of Brazilians in Portugal, I guess, yes. too. So. Yes. Um, and yes, the language is different. The two different languages that people need to be aware of. So, okay, so you decided to move there just, it was just mainly because you're just kind of done in the corporate brand. Absolutely. And because um, the weather, it rains a lot here. We weren't prepared for how much it rains because the past two years have been like almanac breaking, you know, global warming type of rain. Right. So it's a lot more. At first, it was really cute. Like, let's watch some movies. Let's make some soup. Right. Isn't this fun? Right. And then, and then when it goes Four on. months into this of raining nonstop. And actually, your rain season for the past two years that you've lived here, and it just happens to be due to global warming, you've had such a mad rain. Yes. So it's been from May, no, from October until May. Yes. Pretty much nonstop raining every day. Yes. There are some days that it's beautiful. I do recall that we were able to like freshly wash the backyard in January. <laughs> I went on a picnic in April. So it's not that it's just, you know, downpour all day, every day, but a lot of the time it is. Wow. Okay. So you bought a beautiful home. Yes. In, in Porto, where yes. you actually are, which uh -huh. is a beautiful place. And by the way, if you want to try port wine, it's a great place to try it. But um, very affordable. I'm not going to the prices or anything like that, but pretty affordable. I would say that what I get from... Uh, Porto, at least, the pricing of the homes are probably what Phoenix was maybe 10 years ago. Maybe so. And it, the real estate market is absolutely booming. So we've only owned this house. It'll be two years in November. And then I occasionally like to validate our investment. Mm -hmm. So I'll go and look at houses that are have like comps, mm -hmm. you can see in the U.S., that yeah. have the same number of bedrooms or bathrooms. Or, it was really important to us to have now that we're European, we say garden. In uh -huh. the U.S., we would yes. have said yard uh -huh. to have an outdoor space and to have a garage. So when I look at houses that meet all of that criteria, it's it's already increased in value. So that's great. So yeah. your investment's gone up. Yes. But and I also believe in living here, and I want to be invested in the country. Okay. So. And the community, too. Absolutely. So one yeah. of the things when you move to a new country or a new place for that, mm -hmm. community is everything. Especially, like, for me, like, I love living in Central Phoenix. Because that's where my community is. Right. And now Portugal is becoming my community too. Mm -hmm. So what did you do when you moved here in terms of like finding your people, finding your community? It's amazingly easy to make friends because there's a lot of other retirees here from around the world. Americans are actually one of the smaller groups of immigrants to Portugal when you, you can Google the exact stats. But um, so I would say for the first six months to even a year, I said yes a lot. Uh -huh. I said yes to a friend of a friend's ladies' lunch. I said yes to a woman that I only knew from Facebook to go to dinner. Uh -huh. I said yes to go to an art therapy class. So I said yes to go for a walk with a stranger. You know, I mean, nothing like I didn't get in a car with the stranger. Yeah, right, right. And like you were that. open to this. Yes. By the way, on a side, I'm going to digress for just a second because uh -huh. I can't help it. Shonda Rhimes, I don't know if you know her, but she's a very well-known producer in the U.S. And she spent a year saying yes to everything. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the most eye-opening years of her life. Uh -huh. So good for you. Yes. And yes, a lot of good came out of that. A lot of good came out of it. it is, um, I, I met one of your friends last night, but didn't I? Carolina? Yeah. Carolina. Carolina. Yes, lovely person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's from, well, originally from Dutch, but Barcelona. Yeah, so she was born in Singapore, yeah. but she is a Dutch citizen, uh, met her husband in Spain, and now they live together in Porto. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I'm totally that to our topic, so go back to what you No, saying. that's okay. <laughs> um, just that it's really easy to make friends. We've been incredibly fortunate that way, and we have a, a great mix of people that are our friends from all over the world, people that are local to Portugal, which is so wonderful to have, 
Um, I, part of my core personality is that I'm almost maybe too friendly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm friends with the pharmacist on the corner. I'm friends with all the people that work at my favorite grocery store, Little, on the corner. Right. Um, so when I'm out walking with our two rescue puppies, you know, I so adorable. Yeah, they really <laughs> want to be in here. <laughs> um, I'm already, you know, bringing them into stores and letting them say hello and, and all of that. Right. Um, and then because other people that have immigrated here, you're sharing that experience and you're sharing that challenge. You can ask each other, you know, I need to get my driver's license changed. How do I do that? I need to register to vote. How do I do that? So you found that online? Or was there's, um, there's different, definitely there's Facebook groups mm -hmm. that um, show you how to do things. That's the social most, media is good. Yes. <laughs> One of the most valuable ones is uh, called American and Friends PT. And it has comprehensive files and so many resources. And then once you learn how to do something, like I had learned from a girlfriend how to get my medical ID number. And so then... I've made that package to get mine and succeeded. So then the next person that comes, I'm like, hey, you know, Fred, Sarah, whoever, here's what I did. Here's it kind right. of packaged up. This should work for you. Right. So, um, but it's also, it's easy to kind of feel like you're on spring break a lot of the time too, because by the grace of the universe, neither one of us work anymore. Right. So it's easy when you're first here, you know, you want to go and walk around everywhere and have some wine at lunch and take a nap and have some more wine at dinner. It's, it's, it's really, really fun. But then, just like anything else, you still got to take out the trash uh -huh. and figure out the recycle and figure out the laundry and unload the dishwasher. You know, it's still, it's life. What are some of the biggest challenges? Let me just, let's break it down. What are three of the largest challenges that you've had moving here? I would say for me, the language. Mm -hmm. I would um, remember in the movie The Matrix where they put the tubes in the back of your head <laughs> and you go like, <laughs> and then you know how to fly a helicopter or right. whatever. If there was any way, even if it was going to hurt badly, <laughs> you for, do that. for me to get European Portuguese just piped into myself, um, I, would, I would do that. Uh, so that's been fluency. I would absolutely love that. Um, definitely have enough Portuguese to get by and we'll continue to take classes to get more. So you think in time you will master the language? I think much, I don't know if I'll ever be considered a master, but I think that like if you came to visit me in another year, you would see me talking more with my next door neighbors. Okay. Other than grabbing my phone to text her so that I could do it in Portuguese. Right, right, right. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the next thing I would say, and this is just me coming from Phoenix, absolutely no rain, to a place with a lot of rain. Oh, gosh. The weather has been a challenge, and um, it, but it's really nice. I mean, even in July here. Oh it's, yeah, it's been like eighty. Yeah. It's humid. It's humid, but we can walk outside. And, Absolutely. And so. like, if we were to go out to dinner tonight, mm -hmm. on the way home from dinner, we would want our jackets. Right. And so that's a treat to mm -hmm. to need a jacket. So the language, the weather. Um, I haven't had any. You know, in Knockwood, it may come. I haven't had any kind of homesickness or, you know, sadness that I can't find a particular food or a particular product. I haven't felt that at all. Um, so many of our friends, we've been really fortunate, have come to see us. So we've been here just over two years, right. like two years and two weeks. <laughs> and, and I've seen you twice. And you've seen us twice, <laughs> which is fantastic. But you are our, I have to check, but I think you're our 27th. That's so House crazy. Guest. And so... Um, so you're not lonely. Not at all. But I wouldn't have been lonely even if the people hadn't have come. Right. So I think that's a little bit of a balance is trying to foster the new friendships you're making here. But then also either making the choice to integrate the groups like we did last night at uh -huh. dinner or just, you know, your friends here kind of understanding I've got people in from Arizona that I haven't seen in how many ever years. I'm going to give them my focused attention right. for the next week. So, sorry if I missed your birthday dinner, but I'll catch up with you when they leave. Right. But everyone's kind of doing that juggle. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that we need to do a little better job about figuring out our boundaries with people staying in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, we're getting better about it, but we just get so excited for people to come. <laughs> yeah, let's um, do it. Yeah. Because so. you're like, oh, yeah, I can see you travel on you. I'm like... Vickery. Yeah. No, no, no. You've got things to do. And, yeah. and you've been so, 
so hospitable. Am I saying that? It's been wonderful. So one of the things that I actually love about Fortune, I will say in Spain, mm -hmm. um, and we, the, those two, those two countries, is the kindness of everybody. Um, I don't feel like um, I'm not wanted here, right? especially in Portugal. Mm -hmm. Especially in Portugal. I would say in parts of Spain, like Barcelona, I heard they were spraying Americans with water. They really would experience that. But that's, yeah. they're targeting the wrong group. I don't think it was Americans in particular. Right, I it was just the Airbnb. Just, um, there's been, it's so completely over, there's too much tourism. Right. And um, I, don't, I don't know how you can control that. And if you... If you feel like maybe you can't find housing or if you can't find a job, I think that was just right. their way. It's frustration with frustration. Frustration. Yeah. and justifiably. So I say jokingly, but justifiably. Yeah. And by no means did we have any problems in either in staying yeah. in Portugal. Yeah. But the kindness and the other thing is the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It is now I know I'm vacationing and not working, but it does seem like nobody really works. I know people are working because I saw them picking up trash today. But it's like People don't really start their day till like 10 o'clock in the morning, it seems like. I think it's just different. So, um, you know how in the U.S., and I, I probably have done this to you before, like when you and I were first getting to know each other, and you would say, you might have said to me, oh, I had to work 60 hours last week, and oh, you know. Right. And then I know this about myself. I would have said, like, 60, how'd you get a part-time job? <laughs> and I would have... I it's like was, we're competing. Yeah, it was a competition, and no, if you told me you had an early call, I would have reminded you that I work. You know, I started work at four thirty in the oh. morning, frequently. You know, especially with daylight savings time when I worked for an East Coast based company. So that was kind of like cool to say. Like I worked more. I was so busy. Yeah, that's you know, not it's, here. That it's, is, it's not here at all. They look down upon that. I don't. I, I think they just don't understand why we would do that to ourselves, and why we wouldn't value our own well-being and our families and our friendships more than that. Yeah, they work to live. They don't live to work. Yes. Um, <laughs> but you know, if you the earliest appointment I've ever had here, other than something medical, would have been like at nine yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then it's so funny, like. There's no such thing as eating dinner at like five or six o'clock. Like, no. Having dinner at seven is early. Like, usually people have dinner around eight or nine. Yes. Yeah. Eight is the most common, like, dinner time, whereas we always ate at six. Oh, my time. gosh. And they, in moderation, too, but wine is present mm -hmm. in every meal from afternoon till evening. And it's just something that is just done. It's part of you know, the culture here, and it's Absolutely. done respectfully, too. Yes. But, girl, let me tell you, get a bottle of wine for $3, and it is a good bottle of wine. Absolutely. That's the other thing I love about Portugal. And the food is so inexpensive. So, Vickery's also, and his name's Smart Shopper, and we're friends, so she definitely is somebody that lives on a budget, mm -hmm. uh, but she also, therefore, she's mindful, so she took us out to lunch. Please tell my listeners about this fabulous lunch that we went to the other day. Okay, so... Um, since we have lived in Portugal, I have not driven a car in Porto. It's very much a pedestrian safe walking Beautiful. city, and I really prefer walking. I don't really, I can drive, of course. I just don't really like to. It's I don't scary. like to. Well, there's a lot of, it's a very busy city. It's dense. Um, there's cobblestones. It's just parking, you know, it's a lot. So, anyway, I find places all around our house. The place that you and I went mm -hmm. earlier this week is literally a two-minute walk. Yeah. And the daily special is the least expensive one in my neighborhood, but it also doesn't include everything. Anyway, um, your lunch is four euros and 70 cents. Right, and euros is almost dollar for dollar. I mean, almost. I think like a dollar and ten Today, I think, the, I think the conversion rate is like it takes one dollar and eight cents to equal right. a euro. So it's almost equal. So when she says four seventy five, consider it like four eighty or four ninety, right? Right. American dollars. So we got. Um, um, so I got like the cod. Yeah. The right? bacalao. The bacalao is what it's called. So it's like a, a almost like a fried cod, but it's not breaded, and it has all these onions on it and peppers and stuff. And then they give you these little potatoes that are with it, mm -hmm. and then you get like a bread, yes. and then. We had like a, the half a liter of wine, mm -hmm. each of us, yeah. and um, it came to four dollars and seventy-five euros. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like under five euros. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is so inexpensive. And then, um, you know, Eric and I uh, love to go to the grocery stores when we, you know, go anywhere. Yes. So we went to Lidl, uh -huh, my favorite, um, right, which is right down the street. Uh -huh. And so they have like cornflake cereal, like a huge box for a dollar fifty. You can get 
oat milk, like in a carton for 99 cents. I mean, and then they have like, I didn't see how much like the shrimp at seafood was, but it was really yeah. cheap. It's so. definitely less than in America. And the, but the thing is, you know, I used to, I love Costco with all my heart. Mm -hmm. And so I would go and get like the giant box yes. do that. of apples. You just absolutely can't do that here. I mean, you could buy that many, but you would need to eat them within one or two yeah, days. Yeah, because there's no, all their food is so fresh here. Yeah. And amazing. Uh, yes. Amazingly fresh mm -hmm. and delicious. And so basically you're encouraged to go to the market almost every other day. It's yes. not like, it's not like an American. That's, that's something I actually admire about Europe in general because nothing is in excess. Right. The other thing that I really like, especially about Portugal and Spain that I noticed was advertising. Mm -hmm. You do not have advertisement in your face. Mm -hmm. It is, I feel like the theme is more about let's make the city about our community and build it around that instead of building it around people making money. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge thing for me. So, of course, there are pros and cons in any place where you right. live and where you go to, but I will say definitely my heart, and I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying your lives here in Porto. And I have friends here. Yes. Okay, one other thing I want to touch on is let's talk about this art. Okay. Girl, this is beautiful oh, stuff. Thank like, you. You just, like, picked all this stuff, pop, 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 pop. And by the way, I told her every year I'll come, mm -hmm. and then if you guys want to buy anything, I'll bring it, and then you can come get it from me, okay? So, anyways, but tell me, so was this like a hobby of yours? Now, I know last year when I came to see you, you're like, yeah, I'm painting, but were you a painter before this? So I have literally zero formal art education other than watching YouTube videos. Unbelievable. So in my, I don't know, in my middle 40s, I have my mom's youngest sister has a, an art studio in her home in North Carolina. And so we went to visit her one Thanksgiving, and she and I did what's called, and you can Google this, uh, a dirty pour. Okay. Basically, you just do layerings of acrylic paint with some WD-40, some glue, okay. and um, in a little cup. Oh, okay. And so then you, you pour it onto the canvas. Okay. And then kind of do, you know, this motion uh -huh. to kind of swirl it around. So anyway, when we did that for the first time, literally the feeling... I had never had a feeling like that before in my my person. I was just exhilarated by the process. Yeah. The choosing of the colors, the mixing, the the final product that came to right, everything. right. It's actually the first one I ever made is right over there. So I still have it, you know, to kind of inspire me of where I was and where I'm going. Okay, I'll take so, a picture of that and I'll post that on my blog. Yeah. So that that was it, and then in Phoenix, especially during COVID, we lived in a fifteen hundred square foot oh, house. Yes. <laughs> so I had my corporate America home office, my Peloton, my extensive wardrobe, <laughs> um, all in a tiny uh, the guest bedroom. Uh, and so the place that I had to do art was maybe, I try and speak in centimeters now, but I'll uh, speak in inches, was maybe two two feet wide. Yeah, that's nothing. It's nothing. And then I couldn't really make a mess because then I'm going to get it on my laptop. Yeah, and your clothes. Or, oh, right. right. Couldn't sling it. So I feel so incredibly fortunate here. Yeah, we're in her art studio, by the way, which I know the camera's pointed this way, but behind us is her bench and all this stuff. So yeah. I'll try and take a little video. And uh, post that on social media just so if you're interested to look. But yeah, so so this is what you're doing now. So since yes. then you've developed more because you actually are working with a local artist. I think you mentioned that's a friend of yours. That Yes. So um, I have a dear friend named Barry, Barry. who is, um, actually does have formal art education. Okay. So he lives in, in my neighborhood and um, we connected. Early, early when I got here, I had just about broken my back selling all of our furniture mm -hmm. on Facebook and then, you know, helping someone load yeah. my furniture mm -hmm. into their car. And I think it was, you know, the stress of the international move and all of that. Cute. So anyway, when I first got here, I went for a massage. And the, the guy that did the massage, really nice Portuguese guy. He didn't have hardly any English in those first two weeks. I had almost no Portuguese right. other than please and thank you and right. that kind of thing. Which and is the English established, by the way, because I had a massage from him today. Yes. <laughs> um, so anyway, I asked him, because it was in my neighborhood, for some restaurant recommendations in the neighborhood. He misunderstood me and instead sent me friend recommendations. <laughs> and so it was such a happy, happy accident. And, and Barry was one of the friends oh that he God, sent me. Oh, cute. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. 
That's so funny. So now you and Barry are friends. Yes, we've been friends for uh, over two years now. And um, when I was fortunate enough in March to have an art show, it was Barry that came and picked me up here, helped me load in, you know, 30 or how many of our paintings we took. We went to the, it was a, a restaurant bar where we had the, the art gallery type showing. And he helped me, you know, figure out how to hang everything. Wow. And he has such an amazing eye because maybe, you know, I had thought that like this painting goes this way uh -huh. and then he would flip it around or, you know. He gives you a different way. perspective, I think. And I would be like, oh, wow, that yeah. really is cool. Yeah, what a yeah. wonderful partnership you guys have. Cause you yes. mentioned that, I'm like, that is so lucky. It's almost yeah. like, you know, and I told, I've told you this over and over again, like, Vickery, you created such a beautiful life for yourself. Like, I admire you for being brave, for realizing that you weren't happy with the life that you were living, and that you were smart enough to know that you need to make good choices and be brave enough to be uncomfortable and move to a foreign country and take all the risks. But not only that, you're investing in the community that you live in. Yes. You are now part of this community because I know you do a lot of community activist work. Yes. We won't get into all of that, but uh -huh. you do a lot of work. Um, and you also keep your ties uh, with America, too. Um, so I think that's fabulous. But I don't know if you guys caught this. She's really humble. But I did say that she just recently started painting. And you did hear her say that she already has a show. <laughs> so she's quite talented. She didn't realize it, but you can see for yourself. So all beautiful abstract art. So, and I'm sure you'll be seeing this from my house. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. So I'm going to go on and on and on. But thank, you. thank you so much for taking the time to show. Oh, wait. One more important thing. So, can you tell me one way that you really save money, even though you know Portugal is really inexpensive? But, but can you give my listeners a smart shopping tip? Absolutely. So, it is expensive initially to move to Europe. So, I know that not everyone can necessarily do that. Um, one thing that I found out moving here is that you can wear something more than one time. <laughs> Who knew? Wow! Yeah. Look at that. Uh -huh. So, the wardrobe's getting smaller right here? Um, Compared to the U.S., definitely smaller, <laughs> definitely more breathable. Um, but so many things that we put so much energy into in America yeah. with collecting things yeah. and having stuff, you just, you really, you don't. Oh, it. it's not about that. Yeah. It's definitely about the house is a purpose to live, but outside is where life happens Absolutely. in Europe. Right? Okay, there you go. So, by the way, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next podcast. And just in case you're wondering, I'm Daphne Monroe. You're a smart shopper.